Holly Bagel theory basically is just what the nervous system does. It's speaking the language of the nervous system. And Dr. Porges calls it the science of safety and connection. So his big focus is how much better we can do and students can do in the classroom. We feel safe and we feel a sense of connection. And basically the vagus nerve, vagus is Latin for, you know, roughly translated wandering nerve. It just goes from your brain stem all through the body and back up. And it's like this really a, a big sensory nerve. It's sensing everything going on in the environment through neuroception subconsciously. This nerve is always sensing, sending out little mess, little sensors saying, am I safe in this relationship? Do I feel safe in this environment? So those cues of safety and danger are always being registered at a subconscious level, actually. And what we're going to try to do today is bring that a little more to conscious level, right? As I was writing, I was thinking, am I going on a whole different journey? Am I going to be just talking polyvagal and where school moves stand in all of this? I was really trying to figure it out. And by the time I got both book, books done, in fact, book two has a lot of school moves activities in it because I realized that it's not a whole different path. It's just deeper understanding. All of you, I've heard you say nervous system, autonomic nervous system, and all the programs you use, we talk about it a lot. But I think what Dr. Portis and Deb Dana are wanting us to do is have the shared vocabulary where no matter what program you're using, you're using the terms. And I know they sound complicated, ventral vagal, sympathetic, dorsal vagal, but I've been working in first grade classrooms and those students are using those terms. like that because It's just like new vocabulary. And they love learning something that's difficult. They love feeling really smart about it. Like, oh, I mean, and they bring that home to their family as well. So the thing with polyvagal is that it's hierarchical, meaning that like there's a hierarchy that we're going to go through. And Deborah, you've created some really great visuals with ventral mm -hmm. vagal. And uh, so ventral vagal will start there. You'll hear ventral vagal and it's part of the parasympathetic nervous system. It's hard to remember. People confuse ventral vagal and dorsal vagal all the time. And whenever I'm in conversations, they're confused. I put a vent in a heart because basically it's a heart centered place where we are open to what's coming in to us and we're open to possibilities. And I think that's the big thing. Myth number one, I hear this a lot. Ventral vagal is bliss and calmness. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother state. That's a blended state of ventral and dorsal. That's for later, but that is not the state. Ventral vagal is a state where we're alert. There's energy in the system. We're able to negotiate what's coming in at us. And that doesn't mean it's all perfect and wonderful and great. It just means, oh, yeah, this is coming toward me. How can I, as Deb Dana says, keep one foot in ventral? She says that's our one thing is try to keep one foot in ventral when everything else is going on around you, meaning you stay anchored in that place of possibility of I can I can figure this out. And if I can't, I have resources. Yes. And that to me, as I was writing this book, the first book was, that's the key. What are the resources available for our students to stay in ventral vagal? We are not sympathetic in the state of sympathetic because sympathetic is that uh, mobilization. It's our fight or it's our flee. We're going to either run away or we're going to fight it out. And mm -hmm. when we're met with a challenge, our nervous systems, our nervous system will go, can I meet this challenge in ventral? Do I feel a sense of support? Can I, do I have the capacity to see my resources that are available? And if we don't, then our nervous systems, all of us are going to go into the state of sympathetic, meaning can I grasp? Can I, can I push, can I push, pull? Can I, can I somehow fight my way to it? And if I can't, can I run? And then if the answer to those two are no, we're then going to go, neurobiologically, we're going to go down then into dorsal vagal, which is part of the parasympathetic. We can go so far down into parasympathetic that we go into shut down. And that is dorsal vagal. And notice I have door. So yes. if you can remember, you're basically shutting the door to the world. You're saying I've had enough. Mm -hmm. I cannot continue. I'm going to, I need to disconnect. So in ventral vagal, we're regulated and the energy is kind of hum, 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 humming along, right? 
in sympathetic, we're charged and we have a lot of energy. It's disorganized and it's mobilized. You're mobilized to do something to fight or flight. So students in our classroom are often mobilized and they're up going to the bathroom. They're sharpening their pencil. They're, they're whatever. They're, they're in that mobilized state. It's a state of energy that's disorganized. And that's what where I started to really understand school moves is that we're organizing. I thought, oh, that's why school moves is working so well, because we're organizing that disorganized energy by giving students specific things to do. You know, whether they're doing their arrows and clapping out their words at the same time, but they're moving and we're getting them to right. organize that sympathetic energy. So then they have access and they can get one foot back in ventral where they can start thinking about problem solving and thinking about the activity, thinking about getting the assignment done. So, so that's just an interesting, you know, way of looking at in dorsal vagal, the energy, it's not there. That flexibility to increase our capacity to be flexible dharma system. So we're going to, we're actually meant to go throughout all the different states throughout the day with one foot in ventral because, uh, you know, everybody will often say, well, how do we get into ventral? And really that, that question in terms of polyvagal will be, how do we get into relationship and connection that will help mobilize our systems into a space, a capacity of connection, which is ventral. And that's the, that's the point of connection. When you have a whole classroom, whether, or a group, everybody's going to be in different states because the classroom is one big nervous system. And yet that everyone is going to be in different states. I think what I really loved about doing all this work in polyvagal was we have the toolbox. Everybody talks about our tools, right? We're throwing our tools in our toolbox. For me, by the time I got done with these two books, polyvagal theory was the toolbox that held all the tools. Because if you can look at a student, look at yourself, look at a student and say, I am in this state right now. Different states for different people are going to require different activities. It's not the same for everyone. Inventive vagal to me is ready to learn. That's like, okay, we're ready to go. Sympathetic to me is not ready to learn yet. Meaning if you can show me where my resources are, whether it's wall push-ups, whether it's some dots and squeezies, whether it's partnering with somebody who understands the assignment and you don't understand it and you don't feel safe in this moment, and you need help, you need assistance. Where, where's my mentor? Who can I go to? So it's these resources that are inside us you know, our own resources that we have available, but outside in the environment and between others in relationships. And I think sometimes in classrooms, we want the students to do the work alone, like self, do it. It's all self-regulation. It's that sort of an approach. And what polyvagal theory tells us is that we do better in connection and relationship with others. So that's cooperative learning, collaborative learning, doing, and not everybody will like it. See, some nervous systems are gonna be collaborators, like, yay, we have a group of five. And other people are like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do this in a group of five. Just let me do it by myself. The, it's flexibility, right? It's having all those resources in your classroom, your clinic, right. you know, wherever you're working with students and the choice. And that's a biggie, is having choice as to what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, what resources you're gonna to need to stay in dental during um, that learning, that academic activity.